New information tonight from our ABC 7i team in the mystery at U of I, that kidnapping and murder last summer of a Chinese scholar. Well, now we've learned that the feds planted two secret informants in their efforts to try to solve that case. Eyewitness News investigative reporter Chuck Gowdy joining us with those details. Chuck? Alan, when the campus murder suspect Brent Christensen and his girlfriend attended a vigil for the victim last June, he didn't know that she was twisting his arm for the FBI. At this moment, the girlfriend was wearing a wire, first reported by the I-team last October, now confirmed in court filings. And tonight, word the feds had a second snitch in the case after Christensen was arrested, his jailmate. As the frenzied search was underway for missing Chinese scholar Ying Ying Zheng, federal law enforcement officials had stealth operations underway at U of I's flagship campus, trying to gather information on the prime suspect and what he allegedly did with her body. Two people close to former U of I graduate student Brent Christensen were recruited by the FBI to work undercover for them on the case, according to new court documents filed by Christensen's attorneys. As the I-team first reported last October, Christensen's girlfriend wore a wire and secretly recorded the walk and talk at this campus vigil for the 26-year-old missing woman, video showing the couple at the gathering in late June. The 28-year-old Christensen was on the Fed's radar at the time, apparently didn't know his girlfriend was wired for sound. She is identified in defense documents by the initials TEB, is cooperating with federal authorities and has not spoken publicly about the case. In total, she recorded seven private conversations with Christensen that month. Then, according to this newly filed court document, Christensen was compromised after he was arrested in the Jung case. The Feds planted a cellmate next to Christensen here in the Macon County jail who solicited information and reported back to the FBI during July and August. Jung's body has never been found and her family has returned to China, disappointed that they were unable to return with her body or at least some solid answers. Motions by Christensen's attorneys castigate the government's reliance on both informants. They're seeking to suppress the recordings and the cellmate's information. A spokesperson for the U.S. attorney would not comment today on the two informants. There is still a February 27th trial date on the books, but it may be delayed depending on whether the government files for the death penalty, and that they have to do by February 1st.